Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build. Today we are going to be recreating this Japanese style farmhouse that I found on Google searches. <laughs> I just tried to look up Japanese farmhouse and this 3D model actually came up. So I thought it was perfect for what we were looking for and I just got started. You'll see the uh, shell of it came together pretty quickly. It's just a bunch of boxes basically. The hardest part of this was probably the roofing um, because it is definitely a different style than I am used to but I did eventually figure it out and I actually uh, started recording this making the shell and then realized I wasn't actually recording because I didn't have any room and it just stopped. Uh, that's, yep. So I had a little bit of practice for the first time around and then the second time around I kind of knew what I was going for. So it definitely came together much faster. I guess that's silver lining. But here you'll see I'm just continuing the roofing. Also this farmhouse will have a horse, room for many small animals like the mini goats or sheep. There will be two chicken coops and I do end up using a a custom cow shed kind of workaround uh, from a tutorial that I found on YouTube as well. And I will be sharing the link to that in the description box in case you also want to make a cow shed that is not using the cottage living <laughs> cow shed. You can kind of sort of hide it by minimizing the shed itself with tool mod and then you make certain openings and also a little basement room to raise up certain items to hide the cow shed, but still make it accessible for your sim to click on it so that you can you know, refill the hay and call the cow out or the llama, however you wanna do it. So I thought it was very helpful and I will be linking it in the description box in case you want to give it a go, but we are not anywhere close to that yet. This is gonna be a long one. So here I am working on this little like cutout piece that was in the roof. It was kind of weird, it looked like it had like a little kind of porch thing happening and just like one or two little windows. So I tried to replicate that as best as possible. And the roof trim that I use in here is actually the one from For Rent. I really like the kind of design that was on the scalloped edging. I just really, I think that was really fun. So I wanted to include that here because it's not in the uh, inspiration image. However, I just thought it really fit this very, very nicely. And I also used this roof decoration from Snowy Escape. And I did have to use tool mod to get it in the right position because it didn't have the right roof piece to fit on it all by itself. And it gave me a lot of trouble. Later on, it actually ended up deleting itself anyway, because of course it did. Um, <laughs> probably because I added wallpaper or something on the inside of the building. Who knows? But I did find a workaround for that kind of sorta. So <laughs> it will happen again, but I will fix it. Don't worry. And then I really like this little front entryway kind of bump out piece right here in the front. So I did make the roof uh, a little bit taller and then I had to make the roof behind it ever so slightly taller so that the other roof pieces would fit nicely in there. I think that so far it was looking really good. So I was very excited to finish it up. The piece on the very far end near that tall tower ends up being where the cow shed will go. Over here is going to be the entrance to the kitchen space. So I just enlarged the awning that came with Snowy Escape. And then I also used these debug and live edit posts to kind of look like they were holding it up. I didn't like any of the pillars that came with the pack or with the other pack for that specific doorway. So I thought just using some debug pillars would be a nice touch. You'll also see a bunch of other debug items I pulled out like an arch and two fence pieces. I do end up using those later on. I had just pulled them out because I saw them and I knew I wanted to use them. I also need to make note that the siding on the building itself is from Jungle Adventure, but I do end up changing the tone of it to a slightly lighter tone because this is a little too gray Gray, and I was looking for more of a whitish stone color with the exposed stones on the bottom. So you will see that change ever so slightly shortly. But here I'm pulling out another archway that came with Snowy Escape Debug and Live Edit and just kind of mapping out where the fencing is going to go. I did use these debug fences at first, but I will probably end up changing that shortly. I'm not 100% sure when because I recorded this a few days ago and it took me a really long time to get all of the editing done. You'll also see I pulled out some log stacks from my wedding stories because I wanted to have some kind of like stacks of logs over on that side. There is a fireplace in this home. It ends up being in the dining space. So I thought it was would make sense to have a stack of wood somewhere on the property and just on this side happened to work nicely. Also some bamboo stalks next to where the chicken coop 
it was going to go because I knew I wanted to have a lot of bamboo on the slot. I just didn't know where. Figured that was a good spot to put it for now as a reminder to myself. And here I am working on where the heck the horse shed is going to go. So I kind of decided it was going to go around the back here. Kind of hidden, but also not so hidden so the horse would be able to find its way around. And then I just extended another roofing piece and I tried to get the angle and the slope correct because I was trying to get that trim to pop out but it just wouldn't probably because the slope was too steep so I did end up changing it to a different roof trim just so that it wouldn't look you know silly I just kind of used a simple brown beveled one and I think it worked out nicely also a little trim on the underside of the roof piece as well and then here I am back over near the chicken coop I am trying to figure out where the fencing is going to go over here because the garden ends up being in the back and then the chicken coops are on this side here and there's also like a little children's playground I wanted to make sure I had the schematics of the lot all figured out because I knew I was going to be doing this in bits and pieces and I, I forget things so I have to make sure that I'm making it easier to read for me when I come back around now here you'll see I did pull out an actual fence from Snowy Escape that is behind the chicken coop there. It's kind of a bamboo texture. I thought it worked nicely. Also some of these bamboo pieces from, I believe those are from Spa Day. And what I did was I used tool mod to push them down into the ground just a little bit so that it looked like they were just coming up out of the ground and they weren't actually in planters. I did the same thing on this side and then eventually I will end up adding more fencing to kind of separate the space around there so I will end up using more bamboo pieces but you will see that later on and I'm also using these large rectangular stepping stones that came with get together that lead from the front door all the way to the front arch entryway space onto the lot and then back here I decided I needed another bump out because there was just not enough space in here to have more than one bedroom and I really wanted this to be at least a two bedroom and I think I accomplished it pretty well. Um, the child's room is definitely interesting but I think it's pretty cool so if you enjoy it I mean you can totally make it work but also if you wanted to download this it is up on the gallery now under my gallery ID Miss Chris Built and if you wanted to this lot is easily expanded upon I think there's plenty of room if you wanted to add another bump out on to the other side or like where the pillar is you could totally add another room off of that and it wouldn't really be that big of a deal or if you wanted to in the tower you'll notice that's all the child's room it just kind of goes up versus going <laughs> on the ground level so you could have that be multiple children's rooms and they just have to climb up stairs and ladders to get to each other's rooms <laughs> you could totally do that who, who knows the possibilities are endless it is the sims but here you'll see a little bit of the interior floor planning i was struggling with it quite a bit the largest room that is closest to us right now is the primary bedroom and then the tower like i said ends up being the child's room on all three levels just different sections and then the other little tiny room in the middle is the one and only bathroom over here that very large room is the kitchen and dining space here you'll see i am working on on the bathroom right now and I'm using that squatty potty thing that came with the for rent expansion pack I haven't used that toilet yet and I just thought it looked kind of nice in here so I went for it I hopefully I used it properly I'm not 100% sure I don't even know if I put a roll of toilet paper in here because I didn't know if that was a thing uh, I'm assuming it probably is I'm just silly and I did not so <laughs> don't come for me, but I was trying my best. I was trying something new. So I hope that you enjoy that as well. Uh, we're not, we're not perfect here, right? We can, we can make mistakes. But then over here in the uh, kitchen space, I did use all of the countertops and some of the appliances from Snowy Escape, like the fridge. And I think I believe I use the stove as well, but the range hood is from Home Chef Hustle. And you'll see where the sink is. I was trying to cover up some of the shelving and I just didn't like how it looked with those slats. So what I ended up doing was I got rid of the slats, moved the sink to the middle island, and then I added like a little tea section over here. So there's like a teapot that's functional on top, and then some tea canisters, decorative, and some decorative mugs, and also a little 
elephant teapot because I just thought that looked really nice. Eventually, I will get back over to those open shelving units because I just I needed to do something about them, but I had to come back to it. There's also an archway from the main living space into the dining space. And then I added a katatsu table over here with a hot pot on top. I thought that was really nice. And also a little screen divider. Here's the one and only fireplace here in front of the katatsu table. I thought that was a nice cozy spot to have set up for dining. And then I was trying to move everything around here. I wanted to use the tatami mat and I had to do a little bit more research on how to execute that properly because it just wasn't looking right to me. So I did have to play around with it, but I think it looks really nice. I end up moving everything over just a little bit. Here, I'm just laying out where the bedrooms are going to go because I was running out of time for that build session. And now we are back in the kitchen. <laughs> We're jumping around a little bit, but I use this base game tile just to kind of map out where the kitchen tile would end and the rest of the room's wallpaper would begin. I did place down this one here from Snowy Escape that I I have in the rest of the home but I changed this back wall to be the wood paneling from for rent because I thought that it was really nice with the texture of wood and the color I thought it just blended really nicely in here and then we are adjusting the dining space yet again adding some windows and also moving the tatami mat just a little bit and then I also wanted to add these hanging lanterns that came with for rent just above the dining table and then the hanging light from snowy escape above the island moving those windows up a little bit so that they fit better and also adding these tiny little curtains that came with snowy escape i love that blue tone so that is where i got inspiration for finishing up the tile on the walls because i did want to change that but i also added some plants to some of the shelving and also the island and here is where i decide to work on these open shelves so what i did was i used these shutters from horse ranch and I just size them down one click and then I used all placement to kind of place them where I wanted closed shelves to be and I just went with it and it is a little rustic and definitely a little bit different but I think it looks really really fun and it got the point across I didn't feel like filling all of the shelves with little tiny clutter and I thought that that would make the lot run a lot slower so I didn't want to have to bother with that and I think it looks really really nice like this also a lovely fruit bowl and some other clutter items on top of the island here like a soap pump and some towels that I sized down so that I could fit it on some of the shelves down here and I think that's pretty much it for the sink area I might also add a dish rack if I'm not mistaken I'm not sure if I do that on camera or off and then there's also a little entryway mat out front of that door and repeating more of those curtains and then here I am changing the tile to this different swatch of the same base game tile and then just a plain white curtain on this window here because I thought that was fitting then over over in the dining space, I added this bench from the spa day pack because I wanted there to be another little seating area. There's also a lovely orange tree that was a base game update from many years ago, I believe at this point. And then these pillows that are from the bonus... Uh, reward things. I don't know what you want to call it, but I did use two of these pillows and I used tool mod to angle them slightly. And then I pulled out this lovely tiger that came with live edit from for rent as well. I just thought it was so cute. So I did use tool mod to raise it up ever so slightly. And I just placed it on this bench so that it could sit here nicely and just be a little placeholder. And because of that, I moved the window over a little bit more. And then there's also some more plants from snowy escape, as well as this lovely wall lantern I put on either side of the room because I thought that it needed a little bit more light. Also some fireplace tools here in the corner because it is a fireplace. I thought that made sense. And then some hanging artwork just above the fireplace and some on the wall over here just from Snowy Escape because I thought that that would blend in really nicely there. I had a really hard time with the entryway and the living space. So you'll have to be patient with me on that. It was, uh, it was definitely a task. But here in the entryway, we do have a bookshelf with a lamp on top and then I just went about changing the roof because I wanted to widen the space a little bit. I wanted to make sure there was enough room for a couch and two easy chairs and also a TV. So that took me a little bit of time, but I threw these couches down and then I was just like, let's see how this works out. And then we will decide on the wallpaper and the final tone of the chairs and couch later on. So here I am trying this kind of greenish blue, which I did like, but I thought that it kind of clashed with the curtains that I had picked. So I went with a lighter blue instead. And then from there, added a little bit more artwork to the wall. I believe I added some more plants as well. 
And then over here in the entryway, I thought having a little tea area would be nice. So I placed originally this like coffee table end table thing with this tray of tea that came with, I believe, paranormal stuff. Uh, but I thought that actually using a regular table here in the end would be better. So I do end up switching that out for this table instead. And then the chairs actually slot to it. But this little tea decoration shelf on top is from Snowy Escape. And I did keep that there. And then I could finally get into the living space and really figure out what I was doing. I changed the, <laughs> I changed the the swatch back to this black one with a little bit of blue accent and I was very happy with it but it just I was very unsure it took me a long time to get there I also picked out this bookshelf that came with Snowy Escape so I switched that one with the one that I originally had in the entryway and then I picked out some more decorations to put inside of this room as well as a little fountain to put outside which you will see later that goes near the cows area and then back to the bathroom I decided to grab this lovely wood kind of wall mural piece. I thought that it would look really, really nice in here. And then also a robe to the wall. And that is pretty much it. Very simple, kind of minimalist bathroom. Then for the child's room, I knew that I wanted a set of stairs to go to this level because this level is going to be more of an artsy kind of space. There's going to be the science table, maybe the craft table, something along those lines. And then maybe the uppermost level can be where he does homework. Here's the living space. As you can see, I just put in a bunch more plants. Then out front here, we have some more of these bamboos from the Growing Together expansion pack. And I did move that fountain just to the middle. The rest of this for a while is going to be landscaping and it is mostly debug and live edit from Snowy Escape and actually a little bit from Werewolves as well because I kind of just wanted it to be really simple, kind of low-lying plants, a little bit of leafy green plants and then I did end up throwing in some of those, what are those, molten something, volcano flowers. I don't know what they are but they're really pretty and they have just a splash of red. I thought that having that here would just kind of bring another element of color into it so I thought it would be nice also this little statue which is from like the shrine that comes in Snowy Escape it's located somewhere in Mount Komorebi when you're walking the trails so I thought it'd be cool to feature one of those in front of our home as well and later on you will see also I make kind of a little graveyard space because I thought it would be nice to have like the family graveyard or something on the other side of the wall where that little cutout is where the uh, fence ends it was a little bit of a strange space and I didn't know what to put there so I thought having like a little shrine to your ancestors would be a nice little touch I'm not 100% sure I was just working with what I had so <laughs> here out in the front we're adding some grass pieces where these bamboo uh, fence pieces are I thought it made it look a little bit more more natural like there's grass just naturally growing in between the slats and it's not a big deal and then we have some terrain paint just to map out where the stepping stones go I just wanted it to kind of blend in nicely and I think that I accomplished that here is some terrain paint to finish off this space I do end up adding more landscaping in a little bit but I was kind of growing a little tired of the interior and was kind of needed a break from it so I thought maybe taking a second to step to the outside and that would fix my <laughs> my brain fog but we have the garden going in here these are the plots that came with cottage living and I thought that they looked nice back here use some more of these debug bamboo fence pieces as well as this archway yet again and then I do clutter it up with a whole bunch of plants as well as some horse stuff back here because I knew that we were going to have a horse and I just wanted to make sure we had enough space to have a jump and also some barrels. Pardon my cat meowing in the background. If you hear him, he's fine. He's just he's just calling for me. But we have some prairie grass going in as well because I wanted to make sure that the horse always had something to eat even if his uh, feeding trough wasn't full all the way. And that is over here up against this lovely tree. And then I decided, you know what? Two sets of barrels would be nice. Having two sets of barrels might be a good thing. So I threw in another set and then just used terrain paint to kind of map out the little trail that goes around it. I thought that was fun. I always enjoy doing that with my terrain paint and these horse barrels because it's just so cool to kind of give it a little bit more realism like it's been heavily used so <laughs> there's some rough patches and some little dirt spots all throughout and I really enjoyed that but there's one jump and two sets of horse barrels and that's pretty much it. Oh and the ball. 
the horse has the ball. And of course it has all that it needs for feeding and drinking. And the garden space does get a little bit more involved later on. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that it had its basic necessities and all of the terrain paint to kind of blend it all together. This took me, I'm going to say over a period of like three days or so because I was working at the same time like I was working and then I would get home and have to do kid stuff family stuff and then put the kids to bed and then try to feverishly build yet again plus my hand has been really hurting me I have something that's up with my wrist and my thumb and of course that's my dominant hand it is my mouse hand it is not fun so we've been struggling but we're working on it so hope everybody here has been doing well though uh, let me know in the comments down below what you have been in the mood to build recently also let me know if you have gotten the new love struck pack because as you can tell I have not yet, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm just really, really kind of holding out. I do want to get it before the early buy content is over, but it might have to wait for one more paycheck or two because things are expensive and we are living in the real world, unfortunately, not the Sims. But here you'll see I am finishing up more of this kind of landscape and terrain paint break that I took from the house. I did pull out a lot of debug and live edit plants and trees and shrubs and ignore my husband playing video games in the background. He's talking to his buddies. I'm sorry. And we are also in here working on the shrine space. So I pulled out these uh, graves slash shrine pieces from the live edit and debug menu for snowy escape and then i also pulled out some of these this little like spirit little like spirit thing i really like that and also this little tree with the little wishes on it and then of course these flowers that can go in front of the headstones and then these two little lanterns they're actually quite big that go here and then these are just debug and live edit uh, headstones that came with vampires. I put them right here uh, in place of if you were to have actual graves. So hopefully that is suitable for you. But I just wanted to make sure I had something here so that I could put down the terrain paint and map it out properly. If you play with this home and your household has a family member who passes on, you can just delete those live edit and debug ones and place their actual headstone there and they'll have a very nice little place to have their final rest. Here you'll see I'm going to start the landscaping in the garden space I think that it ends up looking really nice I tried to keep it kind of simple I didn't want anything to obstruct your sim and being able to get to the crops and then over here where the horse bed is I end up throwing down a utility mat so that the goats and sheep would have a place to sleep as well that is kind of blended in with the hay from the horse bed and when I was play testing this I had a mini goat and a mini sheep I believe and they were able to sleep in this area just fine and my horse was also able to get to their bed also when they felt like it that is um it, horses are stubborn I guess <laughs> I wouldn't know I don't have one but I'm assuming that they're pretty stubborn and in this game they are also stubborn she never wanted to lay down in the space that I had delegated for her also, this rain chain that is out here in the front entrance, I really enjoy that. So you did use tool mod to kind of move it down a little so it looks like it's blended in with the roof line. Also, a bunch of those lanterns on the outer parts of the building to kind of light the outside a bit. Those are from Snowy Escape. And then I also added some of these roof decorations that came with for rent just out in the front to give it a little more something. And I think they end up looking really cool. I very much enjoy those. I think it's just a little... A little more embellishment on the exterior is always nice. And then more of these base game, little tiny, I don't know what you'd call it, clover shaped windows. I thought that they just looked so pretty and I really wanted to use those. Now we're going to be working on the primary bedroom. This is the parent's bedroom, either parent or parents, could be one or two adult sims in here. But I use this bed from Snowy Escape. At first it is in the pink swatch. I'm not 100% sure if I change it or not. I don't believe I do because I really do like this swatch. It's one of my favorites. And then the rug is from For Rent. The accent wall behind the bed is from For Rent as well. And then the end tables and the lamps are from Snowy Escape. I also threw on some of these little clutter items. We have a little notebook on the end table and then a little prop up pillow from for rent on the other side then on this side of the room we have a dresser and also a little end table that has the jewelry box on it from crystal creations i thought that, that was a nice touch to have some jewelry and other little knickknacks in this room that would be you know would be nice if they were functional actually i think you can put jewelry in that one but i'm not 100 percent sure so don't quote me on that and then over here i thought having a little poof at the end of the bed would be nice but i did move it over to in front of the window 
window because I just thought it didn't leave much space to get in and out of the bed. And some more of these curtains just in the simple white swatch because I thought that was nice. Right next to the bed, some more of these paintings from Snowy Escape and then a couple more plants. I pulled out this base game one and then also these hanging plants, little air plants from... I believe movie hangout stuff and then also these air plants from the Bloomin Rooms kit. I really like those. And I think that they're really like natural and airy looking and kind of I don't know, maybe goes with the zen of the room, if you will. But then I also have a little cherry blossom tree over here, and I used a little shelf from Dream Home Decorator to just position it properly so that I could alt place it onto the little, like, step down thing on this dresser. There's also a lotus flower that came with for rent in the tea candle, and then I also have some little boxes with like linens and such on it, and this other woven linen box from For Rent, and the standing mirror from Modern Lux kit right next to the door because I think we need a mirror in this room as well. Out front, we do use the mailbox that is mounted to the wall from Snowy Escape, and then we are into the son's room. So this family, I actually actually already existed in my save file. Um, she had, she was an elder. She had one child and one teen and one cat already. And I decided to use them as my playtester sims, but I ultimately ended up going into um, create a sim and I may or may not have gotten rid of her teen son because I just was not enjoying him or his traits. And I didn't feel like building a room for him. So I just kept her, her child son. And I also changed her from elder back to adult because she just was too old to have just a child and be working this farm all by herself. So I thought changing her to an adult would be better, but I did keep their cat and the cat did live here as well. So the cat stuff ends up being in the barn with the cow stuff. And I think that it just blends in really nice. So <laughs> I hope that you don't mind. I did uh, adjust the Ito family just a little bit but over here we're decorating the dresser which came from base game there's also a base game um, mirror that is propped up against the wall and then I'm just throwing on the wall a bunch of decorations to fit this child's room. I really like the swatch of this bed that came with Snowy Escape. And then the wall mural that is behind it. I really enjoy that one as well because I think that this child is very adventurous. They love the outdoors. They love snowboarding, skateboarding, playing sports, um, playing with you know their void critters and all that fun stuff. So I think this room really fits that wild nature a little bit. It's very fun and adventurous. And they have three levels to their room. So which child has that I ask you and then up here is going to be like I said their little creative space they have a science table and a creativity table also this decoration that came with growing together it's just like a little diorama of a spaceship that they made themselves I thought that was a nice touch and I added this large fluffy rug and I did size it up a little bit with tool mod and then I changed the swatch to more of a yellow I just thought it was a nice color to have up here we do need I think one more window up here but I'm not 100% sure if I added one or if I just cluttered the walls up with art I may have very well just done a lot more art I also added with all placement and with the tool mod this uh, lamp here, the little mushroom light on the art table because I thought that it needed a little bit more light and then some more artwork, some void critter posters and some artwork maybe that he created and then these uh, crafts, these different seasonal crafts going up on the wall are from Seasons, Debug and Live Edit. I thought that was really nice to throw on there as well as this Rescue a Tiger poster because they already have a stuffed tiger in their home. Maybe that's where they went. They visited the tiger sanctuary and they got that poster and the stuffy. I thought it was a nice touch. A lot of parenthood stuff going on in this room though we have the bookshelf and the little ottoman over here because I did want to include them in this room and it took me a long time to figure out how I was going to include them I was trying to match them up with each other but I also wanted to have a desk in here so that they could have a little like laptop or computer space as well as a space to do homework so it took me a while to really get that down but I did eventually figure it out so this desk ends up having a tablet instead of a computer and there also is a a desk chair from the kids room stuff pack and a, another one of these lamps I repeated from downstairs and then I thought having a little marble jar and also a little selection of arts and crafts up on this desk too would be a nice touch so I did have to use all placement to get everything where I wanted it and that is pretty much it 
for that desk. Also, another little stack of books. I was just trying to really make this desk look like it had a use. Of course, we have a bear chair, and I also put a backpack on the bear chair, and I used tool mod to kind of angle it back so it looks like it's kind of just been thrown onto the chair and it's slightly leaning back because that is what backpacks do. Also a light from Tiny Living and then I repeated the wallpaper and flooring from the room just below and more of these wall lanterns that I have used all throughout this home because again it needed a little bit more light but I didn't feel like putting in another ceiling light and I already had a standing floor lamp so I thought it would be okay to use these lamps one more time. Some more posters again and then the curtains I end up using are from Base Game in this orange and yellow swatch. I really just wanted it to be colorful and fun up here because this is the child's room and they are allowed to have lots of fun colors even if it's not their parents personal style. I think that it makes a lot of sense. I don't think I end up putting a rug up here just because it didn't seem necessary because there was a rug just below it. And then you'll see very quickly I added some wallpaper and flooring to where the barn is going to be, but I did not yet know how I was going to accomplish that. So that was a later problem for me. <laughs> Instead, I decided to get started on the chicken coop area and also the playground area for the child. So we pull out a set of monkey bars and a swing set. And then I used terrain paint eventually to blend that in a little bit more. And here I am closing off a little bit more of the chicken coop area because I did want the space to be semi-closed off. Now here's more of that bamboo going in that I told you about earlier. Eventually, I do end up getting rid of that middle panel of bamboo because I want your sims to be able to walk through that, no problem. And I also add these debug and live edit bags of either chicken feed or or you know fertilizer, whatever that is. I do use those as well as these other bags of soil. And then I pulled out these little fake growing boxes and I threw in some debug and live edit um, lettuce heads from Cottage Living, the two on the ends and then one in the middle that I sized down one click because I just wanted it to look like there was something growing in here. Maybe this is like the chicken's special lettuce that they like to eat and then also over here some tall grass that came with Snowy Escape. I sized it down a little bit and just shoved it in that box like maybe that's some special chicken feed grass stuff. I don't know. It, it, it's vitamin grass if you will. I don't know. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it but I thought it looked really cool in here and it made the space make a little bit more sense and then I added some more of these tall bamboos and I did have to size a few of them down and then like change the orientation of them a little bit and one more large tree on this side because I very much enjoy that and then over here we are just changing up a little bit more of the landscaping I added a bunch more of these low-lying plants and then I just change it all around I'm going to skip ahead to where it's pretty much almost done I did use one of these big oversized bush things that come in almost every single single pack that we get now. I really do like those. They help fill up a space really nicely, as well as these other plants, which I have already repeated a gazillion and a half times, so I won't bore you with the details, but most of them are from Snowy Escape. And then the other leafy plant that has kind of the jagged edges is from Werewolves, and then more of these other flowers that are just peppered all over the lot, and more of this tall grass to kind of blend everything together. I think it came out really nice. We have some more terrain paint going in, and pretty soon we'll be back back inside the house but first I wanted to cover the outside of this whole exterior fence with this like stack of bamboo that goes all throughout the exterior of the fencing because I just did not really like that space and I thought that there was like plants coming through it and it just was driving me nuts. Now we are into the cow shed and what I had to do was size down the shed itself um, and then have a sim come over and pull out the cow itself and then I had to figure out what I was going to use to hide the cow shed so I did pick out this bucket and I ended up watching the tutorial shortly after here is almost the finished product I had to get rid of the doorway itself so I used some columns and then I used the um, all placing and the nine key to raise up that awning a little bit I also had to create a basement move this bucket to the basement and then use the nine key to raise it up ever so slightly or down until it matched up with where the cow shed was and then I could hide, quote unquote, hide the cow shed 
in the bucket. Tool Mod also comes in really helpful with this too because you can click on the bucket itself and move it around without having to move it to the level that I was trying to operate from. But here you'll see it did work just fine. I had my sim call the cow out of her quote unquote shed, her little barn area. The cow was able to come out just fine. And then later on, I had her milk the cow, clean the cow, refill the hay when it was empty, clean the shed. Everything worked just fine. So I was very pleased with myself. Again, the link to that tutorial will be in the description box down below. I found it very helpful and I really enjoyed using someone's tutorial to make a vision come to life in the sims because they you know the the cow shed is great the animal shed is great but it doesn't exactly fit all aesthetics and i think that knowing how to work around that will really help to blend that in to a lot of people's builds here is a little view of the shed with some of the cat stuff in it we have a cat box we have a feeding bowl we have some debug and live edit hay, hay bales and also the regular hay bales for you to sit on and then i pulled out a little toy box for the kitty and i put it right over here next to the hay bale and then i also pulled out a bunch of toys to put in it so we, she has a bunch of toys to play with and the child really loved his kitty cat so he got to play with her a whole bunch and I think this space came together really nicely I wanted it to make it a functional space for someone other than just the cow but here we have some live mode footage we have mom she has just made breakfast everyone is eating in the kitchen there's the kitty right there cleaning himself behind the island <laughs> it's just kind of fun everybody was able to route around this home very easily which is a good thing there's also the horse in the front yard you can see him out the window but it was a it was a hectic time playtesting this because everyone wanted to do everything all at once as you can see everyone wanted to help garden uh, the horse could not stay away from the little boy they were very good friends and that happened autonomously so I was very excited about that but we had a nice big garden the horse had plenty of space to play and have fun and just frolic around there's also a mini goat I don't know if you'll see it in this footage because it was very elusive I could never actually get it to be in frame and here is the little boy riding his horse around the town this is not of the home but it's right outside the home and I just thought it was too pretty of a footage to not include in this and then right after this he headed home to have a family meal because his uncle came to visit very surprisingly so here they are all sitting down to their hot pot meal at the katatsu table just enjoying it some family time it was a lot of fun uh, mom burned her tongue on the very hot food that they were eating apparently oh my gosh i had a lot of fun with this one though and i hope that you did too if you did enjoy please be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next or if there's something in particular you would like to see me recreate or if you have also created a farm in mount Comorebi and what kind of experience you had if you do use the tutorial i link in the description box i'd love to hear how it went i think that it came together really nicely and i was very proud of this so i really hope you enjoy it too and i will talk to you guys soon thanks guys bye bye